No wonder I couldn't open the door in the dock. It's been blocked with a pole. And it's a sliding door. The metal rails on the wall and floor give that away. That would suggest that I'm in some kind of a bunker. They're usually sliding doors in bunkers because you can still open them after an explosion. Huh. The door isn't that easy to open. Perhaps I can open the door with that. <sighs> Nothing's happening. A few loose wires are hanging out of the box. Looks as though they've been pulled out on purpose. I'll stick them in again. So let's see. Oh, there's even a light switch. This one here must be the switch for the door. The label makes it somewhat easier. Strange. It only made a noise for a short time. Of course the door won't open with that there. I'll take it out of the way. You see? It works. A big, dark room and... bars. I can hardly make anything out. We've been expecting you, Darren. What is this? Who are you? One day, you will be our guest. What are you gonna do? What have you done with Angelina? No! I'm going now. By the way, escape is impossible. This is an old Second World War bunker. There are meter-thick concrete walls, steel, and rock between you and freedom. We'll come for you in a few days, Darren. I wish you a pleasant stay. Damn it! What do you want from me? Why did you have to use Angelina as bait? Why her? I'm gonna find you. Ugh. Camping stove. Presumably, I'm supposed to heat up my food with it. Looks like ready meals in aluminum trays. That's not the kind you'd get in the supermarket. Looks more like it's a to go tray. I'll just take one. It seems they don't want to let me go thirsty. Huh. That's about 10 liters. If you need around two liters a day, that means they want to keep me waiting here for no more than five days. Great. A chain that's about two meters long. That's one of those things you can light gas with. The metal part is rubbed with a kind of flint and then makes sparks. Looks like a screwdriver. What's that doing here? Huge padlock, quite old with a large keyhole. The 
The iron bars are covered in rust. I still can't move them. Good. I hope I can get enough rust off here. I've collected the powder on the pages of the storybook. Yeah, that should be enough. Right. I'll carefully scrape the aluminum off with the knife. Now this could take a while. Alright, I've mixed the aluminum powder with the powdered rust. It's sure not the greatest welding powder, but it ought to do for the lock. It's still very strong, even though it's old. I won't be able to break it open. I could use a welding torch right now. Or... Hmm... Welding powder. It's a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum powder. That stuff burns at almost 2500 degrees Celsius and can easily melt iron. And iron oxide is in rust. There's enough of that here. That's it. The welding powder's in the lock. I shouldn't let the flame burn too long. Who knows how long the gas will last. Good. Lit. I'll have to hurry up. It's not gonna burn forever. All right then. Real careful now. It's really evil stuff. The wicked thing is, it can burn without oxygen. That means you can't put it out with sand, for example. And if you pour water on it, the water is broken down by the heat, creating oxygen, or hydrogen, or oxyhydrogen, explosive gas. Everything explodes and superheated droplets fly everywhere. There's been some serious accidents. So it's not really something to try at home. But this was an emergency. Put the light on first. That was easy. An old box. Let's see. Magnesium flares. I'll take them. That's a... Uh, no idea what that is. Hmm. It says here that it's a rubber dinghy with a built-in compressed air capsule. You pull the ripcord and the dinghy inflates within seconds. Phew. It must have been the cutting edge of technology back then. Quite thick. The kind that firefighters use. I guess it's been lying around here for years. It probably won't last much longer. Lovely theme. Oh crap. I 
know I'm gonna regret this. Oh my god. Angelina's Pasua. Reginald Boris. He's been stabbed to death. Ugh. Perhaps... Perhaps I'll find some clues to what happened to Angelina. Don't let it happen. You have to stop the evil. God damn it. This can't be for real. This can't be for real. Pocket. Oh, gee, looting a corpse, just what I needed. But if it helps Angelina. Okay, I've just got to do it. Hmm, sounds like a poem. But this is just half of it. The paper's torn. Days be done, Gordon's sun, hanging long and grow, the light end in sight. I've no idea what that means, but I'll take the paper. And there's something else. Insulation tape. Oh, that's it. Luckily, there's nothing else here. The metal locker must be about 50 years old, like most things here. I'm surprised that everything is kept so well. The thick walls probably keep things preserved. What have we got here? Whoa, a stick of dynamite. Hmm, does 50-year-old dynamite still work? Or does it work too well and explode in my hands? the other stick here for now. I don't want to push my luck. The people who were living in this bunker seem to have left half of their things behind. There are bottles, boards, crates, pipe fittings, cardboard boxes, all kinds of things. Boards, a broken lamp, and an old-fashioned detonating device. Huh. A pressure hatch like the ones you see in submarine movies. Looks old, but isn't rusty yet. Let's see... See. Oh, it smells like stagnant water and rust. This could be some kind of water storage or tank or something.
these pieces broke off the concrete girder. There's a pair of gloves and a wrench. I'll take them both with me. A hatch. It leads back downwards. But that could be my way to freedom. The wall here seems to have been repaired, for whatever reason. What a disgusting brew. You know, sometimes the only thing that helps is brute force. Magnesium flares light up very brightly, and can also burn underwater. Divers use them when they're way down deep, and where normal lamps won't work. Good. There's another stick of dynamite. Just in case the first one isn't enough. There's a box. Hmm. These are cables with igniters. Presumably for dynamite. I'll take one of the cables with me. Alright. I've taped the stick of dynamite on the hatch. If I'm lucky, I can blow a hole in the hatch with it. There's an igniter cap fastened to the end of the cable. I reckon the cable's a good ten meters long. I think it makes more sense to position the dynamite first, and then push the igniters into the sticks. At least I'll be some distance from the explosion, should something go wrong with the equipment. Tape the stick it down. There's an igniter cap fastened to the As soon as electricity flows through the wire, the igniter caps fire, exploding the stick of dynamite. Hopefully that's enough to blast the hatch open. the ends of the two wires around the contacts. The 
wires connected to the stick of dynamite in the detonator. Everything's ready for the explosion. wanted to do this. Damn! There's hardly a scratch on it. It's ripped the handle clean off, but most of the energy from the explosion has just dissipated. Hopefully the second stick is as sound as the first one. Another fuse cable. fell down, it would hit the hatch, and one beam, more or less, shouldn't affect its stability. At least I hope it doesn't. I hope that works. The dynamite should blast the concrete gutter from the ceiling once and for all. I'll wrap the end of the two wires around the contacts again. <sighs> then let's try again. This time it has to work. Move it, it's too heavy. I'll put the chain around the piece of concrete. The metal eyelets on the dinghy. I'll fasten the chain on there. boat is attached to the chain, which is wrapped around the piece of concrete. That might work. And up it goes.